We are in the worst job market in tech since probably 2008. There's tons of layoffs already happening. The claim that 9.5% of engineers do not actually do work seems really out of touch to me. The guy who made these viral tweets, who's the first author on this paper, is not a professional developer. He's actually mm. an MBA, which in my opinion, yeah. an MBA grad is the natural enemy of the software engineer. By the way. <laughs> That's true. Do 10% of developers really do nothing? The original video is linked below. It's from Alberta Tech and let's get into it are 10% of programmers not actually doing any work. So there's this research study coming out of Stanford that's going viral on the internet. And by the way, I'm putting research study in air quotes because it's basically a Canva graphic posing as a research paper. But what okay. the research... <laughs> so... <laughs> Research paper. Okay, that's a good premise already. Research slash Canva graphic says is that 9.5% of software engineers are ghost engineers, or they're not actually doing any real work. This guy also calls them 0.1x engineers, which is, you know, probably the opposite of a 10x engineer. This guy is clearly trying to get written up in like CNBC and he succeeded. There's like a million news articles about this now. So not only is author making this claim, he's also saying the quiet part out loud. He's advocating for companies to do mass layoffs to get rid of these so-called ghost engineers. I think advocating for layoffs is universally a pretty crummy thing to say, but in an era of probably the worst tech job market in 10 to 15 years. Oh, look at that. Ooh, ooh, it's going down. That's true, it's terrible. Also, I'm not sure like with the 10%, if you're working in a corporate job, a lot of stuff is BS that you have to take care of. So, that's also going to take away from the development time. But yeah, okay. <laughs> wow, that's terrible. Years where layoffs are already constantly happening. Saying this and not being 1000% sure of your claim is pretty despicable. So I'm going to yeah. break down what the research actually says, whether this lines up with my experience as a software engineer. And then at the end, we need to get to the bottom of, is this actually true? So what is he actually saying? Basically the claim is that 10% of engineers are just phoning it in. They're faking their job. And really this claim is nothing new. There's such a stereotype that engineers, especially engineers in big tech, have these cushy jobs where they don't actually do anything. And as an- That's true. I mean, we see this all the time. We see this. Uh, when people do this day in a life and then you see the the, the chicks on, on uh, back in the day on Twitter, oh, I come to work and I drink a tea and then I or get a coffee and then I do nothing and then I have a few meetings and then uh, take a lunch and uh, relax in the relaxation room and it's like, oh, yeah, are you doing anything here? Doesn't look like it. An engineer in big tech, I am particularly sensitive about this, but I will say a lot of this probably comes from content online, specifically day of my life content that was really popular during COVID oh, okay. where somebody that works at a big company like Microsoft or Amazon goes around and uses all the perks and like shows off like, oh, I get free coffee and I get free massages, not at Amazon, yeah. but you know, doesn't show them doing actual work. I actually came across a Reddit thread the other day where people were complaining about these type of content creators. And somebody said, you guys should follow Alberta Tech because she makes tech content, but she's actually a programmer. I will first of all say <laughs> that comment made my day. It made me very happy. I have <laughs> It's good. <laughs> Congrats. Never actually come across somebody talking about me online positively. So that was great. But at the same time, I do support the girls that make Day of My Life content. And I am saying girls because it is 90% of the time women. Yes, the things they show are not necessarily representative of an eight hour workday, but you are watching a 60 second TikTok short. That should be expected. People are- Yeah, but like showing it like, oh, I'm, I'm in this, this cushy job and I have all this nice things without showing the downsides without showing the dirty work that's a bit one-sided and a bit more just like okay uh, uh basically inviting the claps everybody yeah it's so great and so amazing and like oh they're not going to show you eight hours of them coding and expect it to go viral. They are showing the things that are gonna get views. Just because okay. they are not showing you their stupid computer screen does not mean they don't do work. You cannot show what's on your computer screen. So yes, you're just showing all the good parts and the parts that are gonna get views online, which is the free breakfast and the free coffee. And that is just logical. Is that something I would personally pose? No, I mean, frankly, I just don't wanna make free advertising for my company. But just because I'm not posting that does not mean I'm not using those same perks. And you- Yes, but very often they make it look like that is the big thing that you're basically doing no work uh it's a very sexy job and you're you're having all these fancy things 
without show without telling people that this is just a small part of it right that's the, i think that is the big problem here um nobody is, cares about if you get free free meals free coffee a relaxation room but making it look like you do no work and this is everything that it is and you're uh, some kind of lazy and then happy that this is the kind of way uh, i don't know using perks does not make me any less of an engineer or does not mean i'm any less productive if anything using the company gym going to the company dinner means that you are staying longer you're staying later True. or even you're coming in on the weekends to utilize like that gym perk for example which might mean you're working more anyways wasn't this by the way when when suck back in the day at facebook uh, on the campus um basically offered um free laundry services they offered dental services and so on basically to keep people within the the compound so that they don't go outside and they basically are almost every time all the time at work uh, i think that was the the idea behind it if i remember correctly right sorry i got off on a tangent listen there's people at every job that just aren't quite doing that much and i do get that at bigger companies there's way more bureaucracy there's way more of an That's opportunity it, yeah. to sort of get like lost in that mix of like i'm waiting for an approval of an approval and of an approval and nobody quite knows what's going on but with all that said we are in the worst job market in tech since probably 2008 there's tons of layoffs already happening the claim that 9.5 percent of engineers do not actually do work seems really out of touch to me so he's yeah it's it's it seems very high. Of course, there are, <laughs> there are always these guys, especially, as you said, especially in the large companies. They just want to have a simple job. They are jumping through all the hoops of bureaucracy and like, oh, OK, I can't do stuff right now because like I have to wait for this approval and for that approval and this process. And oh, my manager wants to f have me fill out that form and this form. And uh, yes, but there's there's always work if you want to do some work. He says specifically that these ghost engineers are making trivial changes like editing one line or character, pretending to work. I feel like this is a mm. fundamental misunderstanding of what a software engineer does because one line changes can often be the most important changes. I think this guy is imagining a one line code change being like renaming a variable. But if I were to yeah. submit a pull request to my coworker where I'm just renaming a random variable in the code base, <laughs> my coworker would be like, what's wrong? What what's going on? What are you doing? A one line code change to me is A, gonna be turning on or off a feature, which is generally very important and requires like, talking to different stakeholders, whether that be something user facing, like adding a button, or yeah. whether that be like changing a service in the back end, or changing one line is gonna be like changing a config file somewhere where you're- Or fixing an error. That's also very often like, you're fixing something and it's ultimately it's a one-liner then that solves it all or you're adding a new feature maybe it's not just one line of code and two or three but you know what i mean so the i think she's completely right she's cooking here this is this is not the show of okay you're doing nothing because around it there's so much stuff to do to then get to that one line or, or a few lines to make the change um which takes a long time and needs good engineers for being able to actually assert that information and then put this into the solution. Or maybe giving more resources to a job that's failing. Maybe you got paid for that. And yes, that's a one line change, but you didn't just know where the file was and know what to change. You had to figure out what was right. going wrong with the job. All of that is intangible work that this guy is just not considering. And even if that yeah. one line code change is just changing the color of a button, that probably required a 30 minute meeting with like somebody in product or somebody in UX, or at the very least with your manager to tell you that that well, had to happen. If it's not obvious, hopefully these are not 30 minute meetings i i mean that's one of the big problems that we have is very often especially in the big companies as we said earlier bureaucracy is everywhere and that's kind of thing everybody wants to be agile everybody wants to have changes quickly so hopefully if you want to make changes if you want to start a process this doesn't always take a half an hour of a team meeting or something right Obvious. The guy who made these viral tweets, who's the first author on this paper, is not a professional developer. He's actually mm. an MBA, which, in my opinion, yeah. an MBA grad is the natural enemy of the software engineer. By the way, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Unfortunately, in these large companies, who is the boss of the engineers very often? These kind of dudes. 
I have no idea from the from the technology side, but they're good at talking and they're good at uh, managing stuff. And then they will get the team lead or then they will get the department lead or something. Right. Yeah, <laughs> the natural enemy. I like that. I'm intentionally not saying this guy's name because being bullied on the internet is scary. But I am going to link all the relevant info in the description. Okay, Ooh. so let's jump into the research slash camera graphic. I went to go read the actual research paper, assuming there was going to be a research paper about these ghost engineers. But I realized no such paper existed. The actual okay. paper that these freaking Canva infographics are based off of is not available. But there is some research that I think is relevant that is available on the website. But what it does is not measure these ghost engineers. It is measuring code quality from code what? reviews from AI. And I have to assume that this is relevant because they're doing something very similar to what the Canva infographic is doing, which is they have a panel of experts and they also have an AI model that is evaluating code quality. And in the freaking Canva picture, it looks like they're right. roughly doing that same thing. What this paper does go into detail with is how they measured that code quality. But let's take a step back here. Why are we measuring code quality? Who, who cares about this in the terms of um, of 10% do nothing. Also, how would you find that out, right? Because if people are doing nothing, they're usually very good of hiding that they're doing nothing. So how would you come up with that number of 10%? I, I don't know. I don't know. There was a saying in, in, <laughs> in a company that I know is like, how many people are working at that company? Maybe half. <laughs> Coding is not the only thing that programmers do. And he says on Twitter that he took people out whose primary job is not writing codes, but it's not really that black and white. Managers and tech leads will often write a little bit of code, but not very often, and yeah. will delegate bigger coding tasks to people on their team. Are those people not doing any work because they're not producing lines of code? And figuring out who should or should not be writing code is not trivial, especially because he says that he found these companies by just like DMing people on LinkedIn. So let's assume he's like talking to somebody in HR, like high level management. If you asked my boss's 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 boss, is Alberta's primary job writing code? He would most likely ask, who's Alberta, right? So. <sighs> that person would say, who is Alberta? I don't know, yeah. maybe he asked the engineers <laughs> point blank. Like again, this is not published anywhere. We're, we're just hypothesizing, but frankly, I doubt it. And if you work in tech, this is extremely obvious, but just to say it for everybody else, engineers are like writing design docs. They're meeting with product managers to figure out like what they actually need to build. They're meeting with customers sometimes to get requirements from external users. If they're more senior in the organization, they're designing things for more junior engineers to do. Maybe they're helping with like performance management if they're also a manager. There's a lot of things that programmers do. And his argument here is they're not just measuring lines of code, they're also measuring code quality. But again, that's just looking at code. And it's fairly obvious why they chose this. It's a lot easier to measure this tangible thing than it is to measure like the mentorship benefit you give somebody or like. Also from code quality, how could you then come up with the number for 10% of engineers do nothing? This doesn't make sense because like just, just extrapolating this from code quality. What? how well you designed a system. But just because it's easier to measure that doesn't mean that's what we should be measuring. So yeah, I, I do think the research is ridiculous. And again, like the paper hasn't been like released Sounds yet. Ridiculous. So I, we'll see, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I can be wrong if the core of the paper stays the same, which is measuring amount of code or code quality to figure out how much work an engineer does. I also just feel like, why is it always engineers? I never see any research studies that are like, 90% of marketers don't do their job. Like, why is it that software engineers are always being targeted for this stuff? And okay. I mean, why? Because people look down on engineers usually. People also for management and so on, they don't need engineers. Engineers are a necessity. And it would be nice to fire 10% of them, right? If they do nothing, hmm, who cares? That's, I think that's the reason um, engineers don't have that high high status of like marketing people or scientists right so i think that's why engineers are, are often targeted okay that's a rhetorical question but i'm going to answer it for you anyway number one engineers make a lot of money generally so they're enticing to get rid of for companies two closely related 
companies are doing a lot of layoffs right now and they want to keep justifying doing those layoffs. Like I could very easily see this research being cited in an email Maybe. by like Andy Jazzy, the CEO of Amazon come January when he's saying, oh, sorry, we have to lay off 10% of engineers. And this freaking random Stanford MBA said that 10% is the right number of engineers that are not doing real work. And then third of all, a lot of people <laughs> just don't understand what programmers do. And if people don't understand what you do, it feels to them like you're not doing anything because it can be hard to explain what you do, especially if you're the type of engineer that is keeping a system running, but perhaps not writing a lot of code to build new features for that system. It can be hard for people to understand why you're important and therefore it feels easy for them to just lay you off. And again, yeah, it's, I think that is a really good point. It's not just we're, that we're building new features all the time. You need to maintain old features. You need to optimize features. You need to bug fix these kind of things, this kind of preparation that goes into uh, actually creating something, talking with the managers, talking with the stakeholders from the business, talking with other engineers, getting stuff prepared for you on the data platform if you're just doing the implementation. And these kind of things all come before or, or are other parts from an engineer's job than just writing code. Writing code is easy. And I, I'm trying to not make this about the author himself. Like he's at a university, maybe making something that is so corporate friendly is gonna help him with research grants, but to put out this research online and to intentionally try to make it viral, right? You said ghost engineers, he said yeah. 0.1 X engineers, like those are terms used to get the attention of the media it is so damaging to tech workers. It is so damaging to frankly, the labor movement in this country, undermining workers themselves and saying that workers are the issue, not the industry itself, not the companies, not management specifically. He did not say that there's ghost managers. He said there's ghost engineers. It just makes me so upset and so sad. And I should not need to explain like how high the stakes are here. This is people's livelihoods. You know, this yeah, is true. in a lot of cases, especially in tech, this is people's ability to stay in this country, to live here because you're there on H1B, because they're on another yeah. visa. And for him to be, intentionally part of the reason that hundreds of thousands of people could lose their job is is just so beyond upsetting anyway if you like this content please subscribe i generally make short form content but i would love to hear your feedback about some of my longer form videos and like i promised in past videos if this research study comes out and i'm super wrong i will I, make I you will a crying it. and apologizing video so stick around for that and we will see okay so yeah i think like these kind of it sounds like a claim that is really out of nowhere without any uh, real basis. Of course, we know there are people that are just playing the corporate game and they're kind of lazy. We all know these kind of people, but calling it 10%, 10% is like crazy. And as she said, like, why would you do this? When you want to get people fired for nothing? That doesn't really make sense. And I, I'm very, very skeptical if, of that number. Like, and then putting a price tag on this, have you seen here at the end? Here, all right, ghost engineers are a 500 billion problem. $500 billion problem? Like, what? I, I, no, I mean, this, this sounds really, really strange. Let me know your thoughts. Do you know somebody who is a ghost engineer or <laughs> just playing the corporate game? I'm excited to hear your thoughts in the comments. Let's see you later. Bye. Oh, by the way, um, yeah, hit like here. I really like it. Video is in the description. Maybe we're going to look into more videos from Alberta Tech soon. Let's see you later. Bye.